what, what should Mr. Average be doing every day to see to it that he lives a good, healthy okay. lifestyle? Mr. Average is sitting in traffic to get to work. Mr. Average slept with no light the night before. Mr. Average is stressed. Mr. Average gets to work and possibly has a lot of targets to reach, a lot to achieve, and is sitting behind his computer all day, or sitting in front of his computer all day. Mr. Average gets back into his car, is Most in traffic, traffic again. gets home at 9 o'clock at night, 10 o'clock at night, has a really unhealthy meal, gets into bed and passes out, and the cycle starts again. This episode of the heart of the matter today we're talking about searching out sport talent right from their tender ages and with me is our guest uh, mr kiton olatero lagwegi who is the commercial director of clique sports management um, you're welcome to the program kiton can i call you kiton yes thank you very much now clique is all about identifying young talent. Tell me a little bit, bit about it. Why do you want to identify young talent and how do you go about it? Well, we believe that uh, Nigerians are very talented people and um, at the moment we don't start identifying our talent young enough. Typically, um, a lot of Nigerian sports uh, athletes, they only really get to hone their talent after leaving secondary school at 16. So you now find that the four or five years after that is when they start getting their first opportunities at competitive sports. So our approach is um, we go into the primary schools, we uh, engage with them, partner with them, come in there every week and uh, we establish the, an academy in Dolphin Estate on the Saturdays and we train children as little as four up until they're in their twenties in, in a bid to get them a career in sports. So, so you're going get them young? Because, I mean, my own understanding of a lot of great sportsmen and women is that they started when they were in their tens, um, like Tiger Woods. Yes. Started. In fact, Tiger Woods started earlier. Tiger Woods started around three or four. Um, what, what it is, is you need time and hours of practice to put in for you to be able to get to a certain level of excellence. And not only that, you also need good coaching. So it doesn't really help you if you're practicing for hours and hours without proper technical guidance. So when the both of them merge, you now get... Um, Real talent. Yes. Like Serena Williams. Like she Serena Williams, Tiger Woods, Michael Jackson. Uh, it doesn't end with sport. So it's, talent has to be worked on at, at an early age so that you have that time. So how do you go about finding this, th th these kids oh. to... You know. It's very interesting. I mean, the, the first thing is, generally, we believe that everybody that has a normal, healthy body with a healthy, functioning brain has talent. If they put their talent to a sport that they like, like football or basketball or athletics, they would, they would eventually be able to be noticed by everybody as being outstanding. Uh, and secondly, we also have a team of scouts that go around to look at competitions involving young children and identify them and pick them. So anybody interested in joining the academy can apply and we can look at that. And also, if you're just playing your normal competitions, if one of our scouts is in the area, luckily you could be invited to join. Now you them. talked about academy. What is the academy all about? The Click Sports Academy was set up in 2006 to come to, Ni to Nigeria and identify girls or boys that uh, have the talent and the passion to train themselves to, to become good sportsmen. We've already produced players that have played for the Nigerian on the 17 team. Uh, players like Kabira. Football. Football. Okay. In football. Players like Kabira Akishola in 2007, Edafe Ekbedi in 2009 and 2011, 
uh, Dejo Olagbegi, uh, who was a goalkeeper in 2009 in the under-20s. So, and, and, and there are many more Did you players. get any, anyone into the last one that we won? No, we, we don't have a player in this group. Okay. We, did, we did have um, a player that went to the camp, okay. but he wasn't uh, eventually selected with the group. Selected for the final. Yes, selected for the final. Um, but uh, you can see that from the last group, the players are getting much younger. So we, we, we want to make sure that um, our children in primary school, in secondary school, can get involved in, in, in football or, or athletics or basketball and be trained to a very high level. I think everybody that's watching the program supports the idea okay. of, of giving children an early start into sports. But what does it entail? Because most Nigerian parents will say, look, I want my child to do sports, but not at the expense of their academics. So what is it going to entail in terms of time and effort on the part of the child? Well, um, parents have, <laughs> my parents anyway, had that uh, idea and, and it's still very predominant that if you are into sport, your academics will suffer. Um, the reason is when you're into sport and you're devoting time to sport, uh, for you to get better, you need to devote more time to it, for you to get better. But the truth is that you can marry both of them easily. In fact, what we're doing is we're actually going to the actual schools to, to do our program. So we understand that education is We've very important. open door into the schools? We, we have, in, into the schools that we're in. There's some schools that feel, oh, no, our parents will not like to focus on sport. We just want to keep them in boarding house and they read. And there's some other schools that understand that the extracurricular program is also it's important, important in, in developing the child. Um, we don't just teach the sports. We also believe in four core values. Okay. Respect. Uh, we teach each child to respect the coaches, to respect each other's players, and to respect the referees. Um, we teach them cheerfulness. We teach them that um, you're responsible for your own mood and okay. that it's, it's going to be very powerful for you to win any game or succeed in any field if you can control your cheerfulness. Okay. Contribution, each of them as individuals have something to contribute that is unique to them. And excellence, they'll get excellence from passion, from continuous practice. They don't get excellence in one day. But these are the building blocks that we teach them, that we, we believe that uh, is transferable as they grow. Kids and their sporting, you were talking about exercise, you brought that word up. Where does exercise come in with kids? They need to have it as a culture that they've imbibed from an early age. It needs to become a habit so that it doesn't become work. Um, parents are very important in the examples that they show the kids and what they encourage in terms of exercise for the children. Okay, so, so really, um, you know, if you, if you exercised regularly as a child, there's every likelihood that when you're 90 or 100, you will still continue to exercise That's exactly because it's become a habit. It's become a habit. It will become a part of your life, something that you do. And the body needs it so much. Without it... You know. And so you're really looking to get parents to become partners in making sure that their children do exercise. Yes, parents are key. Um, the academy can't do it alone. We want parents to be more involved. We want to have competitions where parents and children are playing. We want parents to come out each Saturday and engage in the program as well. So we need the parents, it's very vital. Now when I watch some of these Brazilian kids uh, juggling the football, I mean they become so expert at it. I, I, and I look at them and I say this kid just has a raw talent for football. But what you're saying is that no, it's not that the child has, the child is talented, every child is talented, but you can bring this talent out yes. by training the child when they're young. Yes, that's okay. what I, I believe. I believe the Brazilian player that you saw, um, if you went to his home or his neighborhood when he was growing up, maybe all the children there were playing something that needed, that they needed to have that kind of skill for them to be in that team. And luckily in that neighborhood, they had somebody who was a good coach who could communicate, who could tell them to drop the bad habits and enhance the good ones. Okay, so this is a, a key, is the the talent is there, but it has to be stewarded. Exactly. Okay, and, and that's where you come in. Yes. Um, helping to steward the, the, the talent. Now, I would say that the child at 15 yes. that hasn't yet been exposed to sport is more of an uphill battle than the four-year-old. Um, I would say you're correct, but at the same time, um, it doesn't matter 
when or how you start. A lot has to do with your values and your attitude to growth. Okay. So if you start late at 14 or 15 and you come to every practice and you put in everything to it, you can improve and catch up. We see it, we see it every day. What about parents? Now, now somebody, you can't spot all the talent on your own. Yes. You, you need the parents to, to support you in this. Yes. What, what, I mean, I, I mentioned Serena Williams. Yes. Uh, um, and, and I was watching a program on, 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 uh, on, on her uh, recently and, and what, what she said was that her father was the one that took her to the tennis courts, played with her and virtually inculcated in her the tennis habit. Yes. Okay, so um, what role would the parent play in identifying and also helping a child to, to get into sports? You see, uh, Serena was lucky because she had positive reinforcement from her father. But she had more than just the reinforcement. The father was a great coach. So he could spend a lot of time with them since they were about four or five, and he could coach them correctly. So today we have probably the greatest female tennis player of all time. So it's, it's still consistent. It's still the same principles I've been saying from the beginning of the program. The coaching has to be right. And then all the hours of practice will come together and... But the parents have got to be able to get the child there. The parent, without, without the parents' encouragement, without the parents' backing, it's, a, it's, a, it's an uphill battle for the child, you know, unless that child um, is not supervised. But in, in the way the world is now, where parents have to supervise their children, supervise every, every minute, if a parent does not want his child or her child to play sport, that child will not play sport. It, it won't happen. So, uh, so apart from giving them the sport skills, yes. you, you've talked about your four core values. Yes. Um, respect, cheerfulness, so you're dealing with their attitudes as well. Yes. What else are you giving them? Are you giving them any training, especially the ones that are getting a little older, in how to manage themselves, etc., etc.? We, we, we believe that if we teach you the four core values of respect, cheerfulness, contribution and excellence, when you grow up and, and you decide not to go into high level sport, you decide to go into a university, you decide to go into a, any kind of training, we believe that those values would help you to integrate into any team and, and function effectively. I'd like to tell parents to, to act now, to not assume that um, their child has to be a messy right now at seven or eight before they encourage just bring your child and put him at the academy and let him see whether he enjoys it or her because it's, it's a program for boys and girls. We have uh, female coaches as well. So just encourage them. You never know where it will end. Um, we also, the Click Sports Management also manages Nigeria's goalkeeper, Vincent Inyama, okay. and, and uh, the Super Eagles coach, Stephen Keshi, for endorsements and commercial um, branding partnership. So you just never know whether your child is an Inyama or your child is a Keshi. Sports can provide all kinds of um, careers, including medical careers, all kinds. The scope is, is limitless. Okay, so it's down to the parents and the it's kids. It's down to the parents. If any kids, kids are watching this program. It's down to the parents. Watch your favorite Heart of the Matter episodes online at www.theheartofthematter.tv. Also check out exciting behind the scenes photos Leave your comments and like us on Facebook. Welcome back to the Heart of the Matter where we're talking about fitness, about well-being and so on. And who better to talk to about this than Mr. Maje Aida, who is the CEO of Eden Lifestyle. Thank Eden you. Lifestyle. First of all, why Eden? Hmm. Well, when I was trying to think of a name for my company, um, when I started this, uh, this journey of my own, um, I literally was looking for something that people could understand, people could resonate with. and. Why the name Eden came along was, uh, of course, from the Bible, the Garden of Eden. Mm -hmm. It represents uh, a new beginning. Okay. You know, going on, uh, on a journey to fitness, it's, you, you literally have to reinvent yourself. 
and start again or deconstruct. So I see the whole journey as um, embarking on a new lifestyle, a genesis essentially. Okay. So hence my relation to the, the Garden of Eden. Garden of Eden. I mean, you'll see it in the logo as well. The Tree of Life is it's all part and parcel of that. Okay. Now, the whole reason that you've you've started the company is to get people into healthier lifestyle, healthier habits, and so on. What are the things that people do wrong? in their lifestyle? Um, okay, well, I give, a, I give a lot of wellness coaching sessions, uh, especially to corporates, and so as a result, I do get to research and find out what people are doing in their lives. It's one of the first questions I ask you, you know, what sort of lifestyle do you have? What, tell me an average day. And the one thing that people don't do is activity. People are very inactive. We get into what our cars. Okay. We get into our cars. We drive around. You get up. You walk into the building. You take the lift. You sit on your couch. You you don't do much movement. And no, no jogging. No running. No walking. The percentage of people that don't do any exercise is quite staggering, actually, um, and just don't feel the need to because I think it's not something that's built into or hardwired into our lifestyles anyway. Growing up. Because as far as I know, exercise and sports are not necessarily mandatory in, at the school level. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was very fortunate to grow up in a, uh, to go to a school where activity was part of my curriculum. So it was in my system. So people are very sedentary in this in this country. They 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 just don't do anything. No activity. A lot of television watching. Um, even having a meal to get up and go for a walk is a simple thing that you can do that people don't do. What happens is you actually just fall asleep. Okay. That's normal. And that's probably the worst thing you can do after a heavy meal. Okay, so what else are people doing that they shouldn't be doing? Um, our diet. It's, okay. uh, it's so um, oil-based. A lot of fried food. A, a lot of eating the, the, the wrong types of food at the wrong time in the wrong portions. Um, that's, uh, that's a big factor. I think that's one of the most destructive patterns that people have in Nigeria. And because there's a lack of awareness of actually what foods are healthier than, the, than, than others, you know, is, is a way too healthy, is more and more healthy, is it not, what am I eating, is plantain healthy? Would a, a, there's not that awareness there. That for me has to change. Um, there's also a lack of facilities, a lack of places to go to find these activities. You know, because activity is not just about going to the gym. It's, it's lifestyle choices. What do you do? Going bowling is an activity. Mm -hmm. Going for a bicycle ride is an activity. Going for a walk is an activity. Walking around a shopping mall is activity. So far as you're not sitting on your couch doing nothing, which so most people do. What are the right things? What, what should Mr. Average be doing every day to see to it that he lives a good, healthy okay. lifestyle? Mr. Average is sitting in traffic to get to work. Mr. Average slept with no light the night before. Mr. Average is stressed. Mr. Average gets to work and possibly has a lot of targets to reach, a lot to achieve, and is sitting behind his computer all day, or sitting in front of his computer all day. Mr. Average gets back into his car, is in traffic, traffic again. gets home at 9 o'clock at night, 10 o'clock at night, has a really unhealthy meal, gets into bed and passes out. And the cycle starts again. There's been no exercise, there's been no activity. So my advice to Mr. Health, Mr. Average to become Mr. Healthy um, is to start to make little choices. Just little choices. Because when you try to do too much, yeah. it's when things fall apart. Yeah. I see men all the time who are like, right, I'm going to change my life. They buy all the right equipment, the fuel bands, the headbands, the trainers, everything ready to go, consult with a nutritionist, get a personal trainer, do everything, and 10 days later, get back to where, it's back, back to, square to square one. one. They give up because it's too much. It's too drastic a change. So I think gradual changes. So um, my advice before Mr. Average would be, if you know that you're sitting behind a desk all day, that's your work life, then take little time, uh, time slots to walk around the office. If you, uh, let's say you want to print out a document, get up and go and do it yourself. Don't call your helper, Santa's little helper to do that for you. 
do it yourself. When you get to work, don't take the elevator, take the stairs. Little tips, little changes to keep you active during the day, keep you moving around, I think is what's I, very I important. I remember I went to a conference mm -hmm. and they told us, it was a Christian conference, but they told us some exercises you can do right at your desk, with your chair or at your table. Absolutely. And that if you did this, you know, it would, it would help. Yeah. So now if you, as a person, you, you do a bit of personal coaching. Mm -hmm. yeah. As a personal coach, could you give people exercises like that? Absolutely. I mean, there's, there's exercises you can do in your office, especially if you, if you work, uh, if you have a yeah. private office. office yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, if you have a private office, then of course, there are a lot of natural body weight exercises mm -hmm. that you can do on your own. Um, just research online, there's a whole wealth of them to do from press-ups to little squats and so on. Um, then if you, but a lot of people don't have private offices, of course, they, you know, so there, there are exercises you can do sitting in your own chair, like little things like leg lifts. Um, I know you can't probably see that behind this desk here, but you know, that's basically where you're just extending your leg, lifting up to your knee and back, just standing up, stretching, walking around your desk, walking around the office, can actually drastically change your lifestyle over a sustained period of time. The difference between somebody who doesn't do any of that and somebody who says, okay, you know what? Every hour and a half, I'm just gonna get up and walk around and get back to rest. You're more alert as a result of it. You know that period of time after lunch. Thank you. Especially if you're like a majority of people that have these ridiculous lunches that make everything a struggle afterwards that's the best time to move around when you start to get tired in fact some companies these days actually have mandatory moving around time so an alert will come to their computers there'll be an announcement in the building everyone has to get up and companies walk around. in this part of the world funnily enough one of the companies that i coached did that okay. here in in lagos yeah, that, that, that is that's They're a big company as well okay. so it's, it's something i wish more companies would plug into because you have to take care of your staff because ultimately the productivity increases and it comes back to you. Yeah. So wellness coaching is very important as far as your staff's well-being goes. You take care of each other. Now, you talked about traffic. Yes. Um, and, and, and for people that live in Lagos in particular, I know that there's traffic in places like Port Harcourt and not so bad in Abuja, but people that live in Lagos go through a lot of traffic every day. Yeah. How can people cope with that stress? Well, the traffic situation here is terrible. In, in a lot of other parts of the world as well, it's, it's just as bad. But uh, it's, it's a conditioning of yourself, of your mind, and how you cope with it. Because let me give you a little example. I come in, uh, this, this is not so much a traffic related thing, but it is related. I fly into the country, you know how it is at the, at the international airports you could be waiting for your bags forever. You could be in the queue forever. So this state of mind applies to traffic, to standing in queues, to just the general impatience mm -hmm. that people have within themselves. If you notice in traffic, people seem to always be in a rush mm -hmm. to get somewhere. They want to push in in front of you. They want to not allow you to get in front of them. And that mentality applies even standing in a queue in a bank. Mm -hmm. You can see the guy, he's, where are you going? Don't push, don't push in. It's, 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 it's a state of mind and I think that if you can start to condition yourself not to look at things from a time perspective. Like I walk, I arrive at the airport, I know it's gonna take me a long time to get my bags. The more I think about that, the, the more, more frustrated I get, the more stressed I get. So I start to distract myself, put on my iPod, listen to some music, start to plan what I'm gonna do when I get home, start to think about other things, think about positive things. So the same applies when driving as well. I think if you can play some nice relaxing music, soothe yourself, if you're not driving, you have a driver, everyone has devices these days, from iPads to mobile phones, candy and crush. internet, candy crush. <laughs> if I get one more candy crush alert from somebody, I'm, <laughs> anyway, but um, yes. You know, distract yourself, play games on your phone, talk on the phone, call people, you care about sometimes you know you maybe if you are in a stressful traffic situation perhaps having a stressful business related conversation is not the best idea mm -hmm. so you have to understand the effects of this because a lot of people may be thinking why bother you know traffic is stressful but stress kills yeah, that's the bottom so. line stress kills and the way you think about stress kills the way you deal with it it matters 
So these things actually add up and it actually becomes quite important. Okay, now, just going back to Maje Aida, what brought you into this? What made you decide to go into mm. fitness, well-being, etc.? Well, um, growing up, I was, I was very, very fortunate and very blessed to have gone to the types of schools that made activity a part of my lifestyle. You know, I, by the age of 10 or 11, I was already horse riding, doing archery, learning, playing tennis, swimming, all sorts of things, but it was part of my curriculum in school. I mean, I had to learn these things. I had to do these things. So it was in my system. Um, so I've, I've always been a very active person. Um, I've always engaged in sports. I, I, I love running around. I, I love that. And um, because honestly, the sense of well-being I get from that is just, it's irreplaceable. I, I can't think of anything that matches that. And um, so as I got older, I, I used to live in Abuja. Um, I, I grew up in England, but I moved to Abuja when I moved to Nigeria. And uh, I got very frustrated by the lack of facilities. The only place that I had to exercise was at a hotel. Thank you. And that made no sense to me. Like, everyone needs to be exercising and doing this. How can this be the only place that I can go to? So I decided there and then that, like, I'm going to open my own facility one day. And that's where I started to take an interest in actually creating this environment for people. So not only promoting this lifestyle, educating people on how to achieve this lifestyle, but actually giving them a destination as well of where to go by managing facilities and ultimately developing my own facilities. Do you actually have a facility now? We've got one coming. We've okay. just started our first facility actually. So um, I'm hoping by the end of this year to have our grand opening. I hope that will happen. I hope so too. Now, I go to Lekki Beach on a Saturday yes. and I see people jogging, walking. Wonderful is, sight, isn't it? So, so this, this is healthy. This is healthy living. It's a lifestyle and people are, are slowly beginning to catch on now. When I started this company, honestly, it was a different environment then. I mean, the idea of selling wellness, first of all, like what's, what's wellness? What's that? You know what I mean? And once you start to teach people that the environment that you live in is practically anti-wellness, and you have to create that wellness within yourself to be able to cope. All these things that we teach about de-stressing and, and all these things, it's, it's not going to stop what's going on out there. It's not going to stop the stress coming at you. It's how you cope do, yeah. that matters and your thought process, which is what wellness is about. It's a completely holistic approach to this lifestyle. It's spiritual, it's occupational, it's mental, it's physical. It's Everything you do, it's, it's how you engage your world that ultimately determines your survival. Absolutely. Well, Maja, it's been great having you on the Heart of the Matter. It's, Thank you. Unfortunately, we only have a little bit of time, but we would, we would love to be able to come back to you and, and you know. Have me back, uh, I'll have tell you back some and, more. Yeah. Um, thanks ever so much. Viewers, yeah. uh, you have no excuse now not to eat well and live well. God bless you. We'll be back next week with another episode. Until then, stay blessed.